friends and welcome back to the channel for the uh, the midweek shave and yes indeed it is story time so we're gonna jump right into it as you've seen from the thumbnail which I'm pretty sure I remembered to post one on the video Perasso red going with the uh, the sandalwood uh, what a lovely scent that is probably one of the best sandalwoods on the market absolutely love it so we will uh, go with my Coyote Cuts Demented Topper, my number one brush in the den. Blank was made by Randy at First Canadian. Beautiful hand tied knot. And this old some bitch, and we're just gonna get right into it. Uh, definitely inspired by the student shaver on this, the back to his roots. So I'm kind of going back to kind of some of the gear I had, you know, starting out in this hobby. Uh, what, six years ago, I think, something like that. And man, have times changed. The gear has changed a lot. The soaps have changed a lot. And yeah, been enjoying the ride. So story time. Um, this is going to be inspired actually by Carl Kiefer over at uh, C Kiefer 045. And um, he was talking about Meat Eater the other day. Uh, if you guys don't know what Meat Eater is, it's a show on Netflix. It's a hunting show with Steve Rinella. Probably one of the best hunting shows on the inter-Googles. And the reason why I like Meat Eater so much is it's so much more just a hunting show. Um, I mean, yes, there's hunting in it, but it shows, it shows like a lot of the entire hunt the philosophy behind the hunting, the, the respect for animals, the respect for nature, the respect for conservation. There really isn't any of the, the hooting and hollering and going on that you see on some other hunting type shows. As I drop stuff all over the den. And yeah, so it's, it's really, really good. Even like non-hunters like the show. Um, very, very well done. And anyway... Uh, so I've been watching that. I've been watching the new season on Netflix. And I have a love-hate relationship with the show. Um, because that was my former life. Uh, was hunting. Um, before the... Uh, well, before the thing happened. And, um... So... I gotta find which pouch this was in. There we go. Um, so... Mentally, I kind of struggle with that a bit because I really, really miss hunting. And like here on Prince Edward Island, where I live, we don't have any big game uh, or an island. And all the big game was hunted off many, many years ago. So we don't have deer or moose or bear, but we have a very, very vibrant waterfowl uh, hunting season here. We have grouse, we have rabbit, we have fox, we have coyote. Actually, I was just, I was on my first coyote hunt, um, because I was planning, I, I tried to get into it for a few years, and, uh, I mean, PEI is a small place, so trying to get landowner permission sometimes to hunt places is tough, and trying to, you know, track down who owns the land, even though it's a smaller place, can be tough, and so I tried to get into, um, I tried to get into coyote hunting for quite a few years, never really got into it. Uh, I did have a rifle for it. And then a buddy of mine, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, I knew he was into hunting and, and uh, he was an old hunting, or I knew he was into coyote hunting and he was an old hunting partner. I used to duck hunt and goose hunt. And we got chatting one night and he's, and turns out he's like huge into coyote hunting and he has places everywhere all over PEI to hunt and he was looking for a hunting partner and I was like well I'm your huckleberry I'll help pay for fuel and, and all that and we'll go out and we'll get after them and he was like yo that's great so it was actually my first coyote hunting trip when I noticed there was something wonky going on with my body wasn't feeling great thought I had the chest infection all that shit and that's the day I found out I had the heart attack um, probably walked about four kilometers, I think, or so that day, lugging a rifle and gear. Um, after, you know, what I come to find out, I had a heart attack two days previous. So, anyway, that was the end of my hunting, right then and there, because, of course, after that, 
and then the eyeball thing happened because you know I was fully planning on getting back into hunting so anyway love-hate relationship with with hunting or hunting shows because I really enjoy them and I'm really jealous of people like Steve Rinella who can travel all over the world basically and all over the US and go on these epic hunting trips and I'm stuck watching it in my house and, and it's tough but anyway so story time that's that's kind of the preamble Fucking ooh, cannonballs flying off here that's the preamble, so story time. Uh, I used to be very big into the waterfowl hunting. And uh, my buddies and I would go out. And I think I'm gonna roll with that for a lathering, that's good. Um, buddies and I had a few spots. And we would go out and do our thing. Funny enough, I never ever did get a bag limit of ducks. And I never really wanted one because I probably would never eat a bag limit of ducks. I always like to have a couple in the freezer or couple Canadian geese in the freezer but I very much only hunted what I needed what I was going to eat razors the Parker 99R haven't used this forever this was my first ever DE razor I got this from my mummy from a, on my birthday with a brand new Voskhod or Voskhod however you pronounce the goddamn thing so anyway I, I never I never over hunted I never really wanted a bag limit of ducks because it was just to be way too many. Or a bag limit of geese because that's definitely way too many. That's a can of the goose. It's a big goddamn bird. So, you know, if I, if I went out once a week and uh, got a duck or two, that'd be great. I didn't goose hunt all that often because going back to the land ownership thing, um, most good goose fields on PEI are private fields and uh, which means you have to know somebody who knows somebody and then you have to uh, lease the fields so you have to pay usually a substantial um, bunch of money and then hope that the geese actually go to that damn field so I never did goose hunt that often a buddy of mine has stepped a uh, huge into goose hunting him and his uh, couple hunting partners so I'd always get out a couple times with them. Um, every season there was always a goose hunt. Uh, actually, Raymond, his uh, his dad would call me up and say, uh, ask if I wanted to go goose hunting. So that was great. And more often than not, I'd get a goose. But anyway, so this one particular day, we're at one of our, our spots. And I'm out there with my buddy Trent, who was one of my main hunting partners. There's... There was the three of us. It was John, Trent, and myself. It was a good first pass. And, uh... So John works out west, out in Alberta. He works out there on rotation, so he goes out, works, and flies home. So, uh, we would get together and hunt when we could. And other than that, it'd be Trent and I would go together all the time. So we're out at our usual spot. We're out doing our thing, we're hunting, and it's a very, very slow hunting day, and there's nothing going on, which happened at that spot a lot. Either, either you got a few birds, or you sat there in the cold and got pneumonia. <coughs> it was one of the two. Uh, I don't think you, you would never limit out there either. You'd never get a limit of ducks there. But anyway, it's a very slow morning, we're in the blind, nothing flying nothing happening and we're, we're out on this like kind of marshy area and that's where we hit the blind set up and uh so we decided to walk down around the point and see what's happening down there there's like a little cove and the birds will go in there sometimes so we go down there to check it out and sure enough there's a couple birds so we scare one up, and I shoot it, and it goes down, so that's great. I got a bird, and the uh, other one gets away, which is fine. So, I only had hip waders, which is going to go to your hip, and I got to go retrieve my bird. And I didn't want to take my shotgun, because I wasn't sure how solid the bottom was in this area. I knew where our blind was, it was pretty mucky. Like you go out there and you know, 
sink to your eyebrows um, in the mud. So I didn't want to take my shotgun out there with me. And I have a sling on my gun, so I, uh, I asked Trent to hold on to my shotgun for me. I'm like, whoa, and retrieve the bird. And he's like, oh yeah, no problem. So I figured, you know, he would sling it uh, like a normal person and then hold, you know, and then hold his so he's ready to go. And I had a shell in the chamber. And I told him, you know, there's a shell in the chamber. The safety's on. Just, you know, you know, put it over your shoulder on the sling and just stand there. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's fine, yeah. Shell in the chamber, yeah, got it. So, we're, I'm out there trying to get to this bird and the current's kind of taking it away and I'm inching along just trying, trying to get out there uh, to get the bird and, and, you know, and without drowning or getting my waders full of water because that's no fun. You get hip waders full of water then you weigh about a thousand pounds and you can't move. So I'm trying to get out there and then all of a sudden I hear Trent go, there's ducks flying in. And I'm like, what? Like, there's ducks coming in. They're coming right overhead. I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. And he's like, crouch down, make yourself smaller. So, I'm out there like an idiot, crouching down in the water. <laughs> and he's back there, and then behind me, I just hear this bang! And then, and then about 20 seconds later, I hear, fuck! And I'm like, what did you do? So, Trent being Trent... And, and Trent's a big, strong boy, too. He's very, very strong. Uh, instead of, like, slinging my shotgun over his, sho over his shoulder and then, you know, shouldering his shotgun and firing, he decides he's going to brace the shotgun, my shotgun, up against his belly with one hand while holding his in the other hand aim it up into the sky and crack off a shot at the ducks. And I don't know what ever possessed him to, to do that, but he did it. So all of a sudden I hear this cursing and swearing and he was pointed well away from me. He wasn't pointed in my direction. There was really nothing unsafe about it other than the fact that he was, you know, basically he was hip firing the shotgun. There's really nothing unsafe about that. Especially with a pump action shotgun, once you once you expend that shell in the chamber, there's no follow up shots unless you uh, pump the action. So it's a one and done. It's not like it's a semi auto where if he pulled the trigger and got all squirrely with the recoil and then accidentally mashed the trigger again, he could you know shoot me or himself. So anyway. Uh, so he, he hip fires the gun with the butt against his stomach and then I hear the cursing and swearing and then he was like what the hell are you shooting out of this gun and I'm like well I'm shooting three inch magnum shells they were size size two or size fours it's usually what I went with I went with twos or fours for duck hunting so it's whatever it was one of those that was in the gun anyway he's like that hurt like hell. And I'm like, well, what did you do? And then he told me, I'm like, well, yeah, I imagine that would hurt. I'm like, you know, there's a sling on the gun. Why didn't you just sling it over your shoulder? Like I told you. Well, it didn't have time. Oh, okay. Well, how'd that work out for you? To get the bird? Oh, of course. I missed. Yeah. No, no, no shit. <laughs> so anyway, that was funny. I laughed. He laughed. We all laughed. And uh, so the next day, we go out hunting again. And he's like, you got to see this. And I'm like, what? So he pulls up his shirt. And his whole midsection is just one huge bruise. Looked like he got kicked in the gut by a donkey. I'm like, is that from the shotgun? And he's like, yup. I'm like, well. I said, that'll teach you to... Uh, 
to shoulder the, or to, um, you know, actually put it to your shoulder like you're supposed to the next time. Because I know I've shot those shells out at the range in the summertime wearing just a t-shirt, uh, you know, just getting practiced up. I'd go out to the gun range in the summer, you know, or, or late, late summer, you know, before the fall starts and uh, getting ready for the hunting season. So I'd be out there like with, you know, one of my rifles, like sighting in my, uh, my coyote rifle. Sighting in the 22, I take the shotgun with some of the um, some of my hunting shells, not bird shot, but I would take like the twos and the fours, run a few of them through the gun just to make sure everything's working and the pattern was still good. And I go with the matching splash. And uh, shooting that in a t-shirt was a son of a gun. Uh, I'll tell you that, you don't want to crank off too many rounds. Um, with just a t-shirt on, you're shooting like three inch magnum shells because it's not fun. With hunting gear on, not a problem. But with all the extra layers, but yeah, that wasn't fun. But anyway, so lesson learned, people. There's always a lesson in everything. Don't hip fire shotgun against your belly. And that was a phenomenal shave. Completely on autopilot, just able to crack out that story. Absolutely, and I mean absolutely no tingle from this uh, splash whatsoever. And this is an alcohol splash. Um, yeah, not, not even a whisper of a tingle. That was very nice. And it's so nice, we're going to do it twice. Oh, I love the scent on this aftershave. Well, that was a very, very nice shave. So, yes. I think we're going to call it done. So, thank you very much for tuning in. do appreciate it as always. Hopefully, you enjoyed the story. Still have a few trucking stories left. i got a few hunting stories. I guess I've had a somewhat interesting life in some regards. So, I do have a few more, uh, a few more hunting stories as well. If you guys are interested in hearing more of them, let me know in the comments. I know some people, you know, are on the fence about hunting, um, or don't care for hunting at all, or there's the people that enjoy hunting. Uh, any of the stories I tell will not be graphic in nature, and um, you know, as far as the argument for hunting goes, I believe in doing my part for conservation, and the cold hard truth is. Uh, the ones that fund conservation and the money that goes into helping uh, manage wildlife. But 99% of it comes from hunters uh, purchasing hunting licenses and conservation fees. That's the cold hard truth. And uh, people don't like that. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Facts are facts. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Do appreciate it. Uh, this will be it until the next video. So until uh, next time, be safe, be kind to one another. Most importantly, have a great day and even better shave. Catch you on the weekend. Peace.